Hey everyone, Paul Bertarelli for AvWeb. Somewhere down the playlist here, maybe in that direction, you'll see the two videos on the long, twisted story of AvGas. In the three weeks since those were posted, Eureka! The FAA has approved the first 100-octane unleaded aviation gasoline as of September 1st, 2022, and that would be GAMI's G100UL. As I reported before, this is the culmination of nearly 13 years of research and development to replace tetraethyl lead as an octane enhancer. So now what? You'll be able to buy it like next week, right? Not exactly. Not next month either. But maybe next year in some select locations. The actual mechanics of this are that the FAA approves supplemental type certificates to allow use of G100UL in every spark ignition engine in the FAA database. That's thousands of engines. If you want to use it, you buy the STC online from GAMI's soon-to-be-established web store, stick the paper in your POH or logbook, and buy the gas when you can find it. How much for the STC? Well, we don't really know yet, but GAMI will sell the STCs online at prices similar to what Peterson charges for its autofuel STCs. These vary by horsepower between $100 and $500, but more for larger radial engines. That part's easy. What about getting the stuff? That's not going to be easy because GAMI won't be manufacturing the fuel itself, but has engaged AvFuel, a major aviation fuel distributor, to arrange for manufacturing G100UL by qualified refiners. GAMI has hinted at a production agreement with at least one major oil company, but we haven't heard the details of that yet. I suspect we soon will. George Browley and Tim Rule will talk about that in the companion video. Today, most Avgas comes out of refineries like this one, Chevron's Richmond Refinery in California. These facilities either make their own aviation alcohol at base stock or ship it in by barge or rail from refineries that have the expensive to run, high quality alkylate columns needed to make the stuff. The refineries then trim up the stream with some aromatics and enough lead to make the octane requirement and off it goes to market. It's shipped either by truck, rail, or barge, but never pipeline, which is the dirt cheapest way to ship fuels. Lead contamination is one reason for that, but low volume is the real driver. Pipelines have what's called transmix when the stream changes from one product to another, and refiners have to clean up that mix and do something with it. Not worth it for the low volume of aviation fuels, so no pipelines. G100UL is best thought of as a blended fuel, meaning it requires high quality alkylate with other proprietary components mixed in. That can be done in a refinery, but it doesn't have to be, meaning it's possible that G100UL can be blended in more than the half dozen refineries that now produce 100 low lead. Paul Milner will talk about this in one of the companion videos I'm posting. So our fuel's job is to find qualified facilities that can do this and to tweak the transportation and distribution economics to make a business out of it. Not really an easy thing to do and it's going to take time to develop the market and find stable demand and distribution networks. Don't forget, 100 low lead is still the standard aviation piston fuel to the tune of about 200 million gallons a year. G100UL will cost at least 50 to 80 cents more per gallon at the refinery gate, so we don't really know what the retail price is going to be. And no one really understands how it will find a toehold in the market when 100 low lead is both cheaper and more widely distributed, and at what point do Philips, Exxon, BP, or Shell decide to exit the market due to declining volume? And can G100UL or other unleaded fuels on the horizon, and that's likely to be swift fuel, pick up the slack? No one knows that either. It's a brave new world, kids. GAMI will make an initial marketing effort in California here at the California Aeronautical University in Bakersfield. They've agreed to be a launch customer, but anyone with the STC can buy fuel there. California makes sense because it's a potential chaotic market. 
three jurisdictions in California are threatening to prohibit use of leaded fuels entirely, and if the entire state went that way too quickly, it's unlikely GAMI could ramp up fast enough to supply the demand. AOPA's Mark Baker talks about this in another companion video. It may be tempting to heave a great sigh of relief now that we've got an approved unleaded 100 octane fuel, but there are so many unanswerables related to market development, it's likely to be a bumpy ride for the next few years. Better keep your seatbelt on, but at least we're finally moving forward. For AvWeb, I'm Paul Bertarelli. Thanks for watching this video and for the companion videos I've also posted.